Welcome everyone to the Judiciary Committee this uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, we have uh, several agendas, I think five. Uh, the first one's at 1030. Uh, and by the way, if, if we have a, a technical crash on the Zoom side, we will try again uh, tomorrow, February 28th in room 016 at 10.01 a.m. Okay, first up on our 10 o'clock agenda is SB 2702. I'm sorry, 930 agenda specifies that the practice of election fraud intimidation includes carrying any firearm or weapon and photographing the face of any voter without permission from um, the voter and the appropriate an appropriate election official when these actions occur near a voter service center place or deposit or polling place. Um, this one, there are enough problems with it that, that we don't have time to fix right now that I'm going to defer it. SB 2702 is deferred. Next up is SB 2706 relating to expungements of criminal records. It expands eligibility for and automates the expungement of conviction records if certain criteria are met. Uh, the recommendation on this one is... Oh, I'm sorry. And before I forget, um, well, I've already forgotten. So on our three, our 933 agenda, which is SP 3196 having to do with firearms. Um, I've made some, um, I'm going to suggest some amendments as worked out with Senator San Buenaventura. Unfortunately, Sen uh, Senator San Buenaventura has missed a flight uh, coming up here today. So I'm going to move that bill to the very end of the entire agenda because I would like to give her the opportunity to vote on it. So I don't know exactly when that's going to be, but I suspect it will be about 10 15. So if, if that's what you're here for, that's what um, you can expect. Okay, SB 2706 expands eligibility for and automates expungement of conviction records if certain criteria are met. On 2706, the recommendation is to pass with uh, a number of amendments, and it'll take me a while to read them, so bear with me. We'll turn the bill into a task force by deleting section two of the bill that would have created an automatic expungement process. We'll add language to create the clean state expungement, expungement task force within the judiciary for administrative purposes only, consisting of the following or their designees, the attorney general, the chief justice, the state public defender, county prosecutors, CEO of OHA, administrator of the Hawaii Criminal Justice Data Center, Director of the Criminal Justice Research Institute, Executive Director of the Hawaii Workers Center, Executive Director of the American Civil Liberties Union of Hawaii, Chairperson of American Friends of Restorative Justice, the Director of the William S. Richardson School of Law Beyond Guilt Clinic and Innocence Project, and Executive Director of the Law Last Prisoner Project. Require the Clean Slate Expungement Task Force to dissolve on February 1st, 2026, and require the task force to submit an interim and final report for the 2025 and 2026 legislatures no later than 40 days prior to the start of the two sessions and will amend the purpose clause accordingly. Questions or concerns? Senator Alafonte. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate um, your proposed amendments uh, on that. Initially, in the original form of the bill, I did have concerns, particularly with that section two, as it relates to misdemeanors and class C felonies on expungement. So being that we're going to the route of a task force, I think that's the better approach. So with that, I'll be able to support your amendments. Thank you. Thank you. Other concerns, questions? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2706 with amendments. Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair Rhodes, aye. Senator Elefante. Aye. Uh, Senator San Buenaventura and Senator Wax Hughes. Measure passes. Okay, thanks very much. Um, let's see what time is it? 934. Okay, we'll, um, we'll go ahead and move on to the, we'll conclude the 930 agenda. We'll move on to the 931 agenda. Uh, first up on the 931 agenda is SB 2686. SB 2686 exempts certain personal information of public servants from government records that are subject to disclosure under the United States Uniform Information Practices Act and some other things. Uh, recommendation here is to pass with some amendments. Um, we'll go ahead and remove sections two and three of the bill regarding the Uniform Information Practices Act. 
In section four, we will limit the person's cover to track SB 2379, which was the judiciary's bill on the same topic. Plus we'll add office of elections, employees and volunteers. The list from SB 2379 is in section two of that bill and includes governor, lieutenant governor, the state administrative director, department heads, members of the legislature, state judges, both current and retired, federal judges, the administrative director of the courts and his deputies, plus the office of elections personnel as mentioned above. These individuals may request others to remove certain personal information. It will be a crime if the person making personal information public has intent to harm. Um, in addition, we'll add a section that allows the governor, CJ, chair of OHA, president of the Senate, and speaker of the House to designate further covered public employees in their respective bodies for good cause. This power can be delegated to someone else in the respective organization. There will also be conforming amendments to the preamble to reflect the new language of the bill and additional conforming amendments in the later sections of the bill. In the committee report, we'll note that we intend that a representative of the covered public servant will include his, his or her employer. So, for example, the judiciary can make the request on behalf of a judge if the judge authorizes, authorizes it. So basically, what in short, what this will do is um, allow someone who um, uh, may be threatened because of their official position to ask the, the, the uh, person making the, putting their personal information out there to take them down. And if they refuse to do so, or if they're trying to do it for a, a harmful purpose, then there is a criminal penalty as well. Questions or, excuse me, questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation to pass SB 2686 with amendments. If the members present, are there any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 3159. This clarifies that a contested case hearing is not required when a tribunal has already issued a final decision and order in a substantially similar contested case proceeding. Uh, recommendation on SB 3159 is to pass with some amendments. We'll amend what is required in a denial issue issued by the agency by substituting lines 13 to 17 on page 5 with a new subsection K to require the agency denying a contested case hearing to put forth its finding of facts and conclusions of law within the body of the decision. This will provide a record to appeal. Also, the previous contested case can be utilized in whole or in part. The body that would hold, that is, the body that would hold the contested case hearing can refer to the part of the case that has already been decided and also have a hearing or hearings on the undecided part of the claim. We'll remove the substantially similar language and replace with arising from the same factual situation and I'll put on a defective date of April 14, 2112. So for the, for the lawyers amongst you trying to establish collateral estoppel and race judicata for uh, administrative hearings, questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. On SB 3159, uh, pass with amendments. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 3350 relating to the public service requires judges, justices, and nominees for judicial vacancies to file certain disclosures with the State Ethics Commission. Um, recommendation here is to pass with some amendments. We'll remove from the proposed financial disclosure requirements that judges and justices file them as they're already covered by the rules of court. We'll leave in the requirement for, judicial, uh, for nominees to judicial office to file an initial disclosure of financial interests similar to what candidates for elected office have to do. And we'll require that the disclosure be within five business days of the appointment of a judge or justice and that the disclosure be made available to the Senate in addition to the Ethics Commission, which uh, the Ethics Commission will make it public like they do for the candidate ones. And in conforming amendments to the disclosure statute, and technical amendments. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. On SB 3350, to pass with amendments, any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Okay, thank you very much. We'll go ahead and move on to our 932 agenda, which looks like an actual hearing. Okay, first up on Oh, so for the hearing itself, we have a two minute time limit for both people in person and online. Um, a, a little, there's a little counter on the, for the online and usually there's a buzzer that goes off in person. 
And if you can stay around for a couple minutes afterwards, <laughs> oftentimes members do have questions. Okay. First up on the 932 agenda is SB 2384. This lowers the blood alcohol concentration concentration threshold threshold for driving while under the influence of alcohol from 0.08 to 0.05. Okay, first up on SB 2384 is Thomas Chapman, board member of National Transportation Safety Board on Zoom. Good morning, good afternoon, good morning. Good morning, Chair and, and members of the committee. My name is Tom Chapman and I have the honor of serving as the 46th member of the National Transportation Safety Board. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify today in support of Senate Bill 2384. This important legislation would lower the state's per se impairment threshold from 0.08 to 0.05. Since 2013, the NTSB has recommended that states establish a per se BAC limit of 0.05 or lower. In 2018, Utah became the first state to do so and subsequently saw reductions in both its fatal crash and fatality rates relative to the rest of the United States. Passage of 0 0.05 legislation in Hawaii would make it the second state to embrace a change that will save lives and cut the number of senseless and completely avoidable crashes. In 2021, there were a staggering 13,000 alcohol impaired driving fatalities in the United States. That's the highest number since 2008. Nationally, alcohol impaired driving fatalities represent almost one third of all traffic deaths every year. Various countermeasures have been tried and some have made a significant difference. Still, the number of crashes and deaths remain stubbornly high. In Hawaii alone, alcohol impaired driving crashes killed more than 350 people between 2012 and 2021. More needs to be done and research suggests that lowering the legal BAC limit to 0.05 will reduce fatal alcohol related crashes by an estimated 11%. We know it works and we at NTSB strongly support legislation that will lower the BAC limit to 0.05. That concludes my statement and I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. The next is Sarah Haley for the public defender in person. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. So my name is Sarah Haley. I um, am here on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. We do oppose this bill um, for several reasons. Um, the first being that it will criminalize behavior of responsible drinkers. So our concern is that this bill will cast too wide a net and will include people who can drive safely and only have one or two drinks if they are a smaller female. Um, so that's our first concern. Um, our second concern is that, um, I guess it's more of something to note, is that impaired drivers who do have a BAC below 0 0.08 can already be prosecuted under subsection A1 of the current OVUII statute. So there's already an option for prosecutors to um, stop drivers who are impaired below 0 0.08. Um, third uh, and fourth, we are concerned about how lowering this threshold will overburden both the uh, police department as well as the legal system. We would need significantly additional funds for more prosecutors, public defenders, and courtrooms. We are already overburdened with OVUII cases as it is. Um, otherwise, we foresee that there will be congestion out of higher BAC DUI cases that are actually the ones that are causing these crash fatalities. Um, last, I wanted to address um, something that I've seen the past couple of years related to similar bills, which is that there's an often cited study from NHTSA concerning Utah's 0 0.05 BAC bill our law that did pass. Utah is the only state that has passed a 0 0.05 BAC bill. Um, and they cite uh, to a lowered fatality rate per 100 million vehicle miles traveled. Um, that is a very misleading study. They pick one year that happens to be lower and ignore the other years that go higher. I included it in my written testimony so that you can review that. Thank you very much. 
Next is Ed, uh, Ed Sniffen, Director of Department of Transportation. Oh, sir, Vice Chair, staff in support. In support. Okay, thank you. Next is Blake Oshiro uh, for Office of Governor, also in support. Um, Behavioral Health Administration, Department of Health, also in support. Kelgen Walton, Prosecuting Attorney for Hawaii County. Good morning. Good morning, Chair. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep, good. Good, good to go. Aloha Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, and committee members of Lake County Prosecuting Attorney Keldon Walgen. Our office stands in support of this bill. This bill isn't about increasing penal sanctions. What this bill is about is saving lives. Alcohol-related traffic fatalities continues to be a concern across our state. Impaired driving is especially concerning for us on Hawaii Island, given the rural nature of our communities, the design and limitations of our roadways, including use of two-lane undivided highways, narrow shoulders, lacking sidewalks, minimal guardrails, inadequate overhead lighting and, and limited mass transit and share option, uh, ride share options. Lowering the BAC to 0.05 is a simple and effective way to prevent alcohol related deaths. This isn't a news concept. In fact, it's a generally accepted platform across most of the industrialized countries across the world with over 100 countries already adopting 0.05. Lowering the BAC will serve as a general deterrent to drinking and driving. It will encourage people to think twice before getting behind the wheel after they've had three, four or five drinks. Our, our office disagrees with the public defender's position. Consuming several drinks and getting behind the wheel is not only irresponsible, but it's selfish. I'm sure there are many, uh, there are, I'm sure there are victims and their families present today at that hearing who can attest to that. Preserving an individual's uh, self-interest to consume alcohol and irresponsibly get behind the wheel seems to be a small concession when considering the public safety concerns. Also, despite what some critics may argue, studies have shown that lowering the BAC to 0.05 will not drastically increase the number of DUI arrests or burden police prosecutors or the justice system. The, NT, the NTSB es estimates that if 0.05 were adopted nationwide, we would reduce the number of fatal alcohol crashes by 11%, potentially saving 1,800 lives and preventing thousands of life-altering injuries. As evidenced by the number of testimonies in support, there's tremendous support for this legislation. Other states are also considering 0.05 legislation, but we don't have to wait for the other states. We can do what's right. We can set the standard right here in Hawaii. Because simply put, 0.05 saves lives. Even saving life, one life is worth it. And that's why our office supports this legislation. Perhaps if we have had the, this legislation in place today, the recent alcohol-related fatality. Thank you very much. Uh, Next is Benjamin Moskowitz, Police Chief for Hawaii Police Department. On Zoom, perhaps? They're unavailable on Zoom, Chair. Uh, in support. Next is Stacen Tanaka, Major Traffic Division for Honolulu Police Department. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, Senator Alafonte, Major Stacey Tanaka from HPD's Traffic Division. HPD supports the proposal of lowering the alcohol concentration in a person's breath or blood for the person's purposes of operating a vehicle under the influence of an intoxicant. Impaired driving is a serious problem that needs to be addressed. Research shows that critical driving skills are impaired at 0.05 uh, blood alcohol contact uh, content. Um, this level of, of impairment significantly increases the risks of senseless and preventable crashes that can take innocent lives. Any measures that could prevent these tragedies and keep impaired drivers off our roadways should be considered. Um, I'd like, just like to comment on <clears throat> the testimo earlier testimony about um, someone having two two drinks and being over the legal limit. Um, my officers conduct field sobriety test training to, to the officers of the department, and they conduct a lot of what we call wet labs, where they have volunteers consume alcohol, it's measured, and um, in our experience, two drinks will not put you at a 0 0.05. Um, if you need further testimony on that, I have one of my expert of, um, officers who actually conduct those classes who could explain it further. Another thing I wanted to bring up is that um, it was it was testified earlier that um, there's already uh, a law in place for someone who blows at a point zero five or under. Um, that is true. However, it wasn't mentioned that there's what we call other competent evidence that needs to be uh, addressed. And in my experience, that is basically uh, a collision or an accident needs to occur for that to kick in. Other than that, 
and again, in my experience, very, very difficult to prosecute. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is uh, Rebecca Leakey, prosecuting attorney for Kauai County uh, in support. Jen Kagiwata, council member for Hawaii County Council, also in support. Maui Prosecutor's Office in support. Daniel Hugo, Hugo for Honolulu Department of Prosecuting Attorney. Sorry for butchering your name. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, and Senator Elefante. I'm Daniel Hugo, representing the Department of the Prosecuting Attorney for the City and County of Honolulu, and we strongly support this bill. Uh, Winston Churchill uh, once supposedly said that you can always count on the Americans to do the right thing after they've exhausted all the other options. Um, and that quote is probably apocryphal, but it does apply to this situation here. The United States Supreme Court has repeatedly observed that the number of persons killed, the number of Americans killed as a result of drunk driving totals more than all Americans killed in all of our nation's wars combined. Um, <clears throat> this bill would allow us to join the rest of the industrialized world. Australia, France, Germany, Japan, South Korea, Switzerland, all have BAC thresholds that are 0.05 or lower. And the benefits of that have been documented and studied. There are two important reasons, however, why it's important that we bring it here to Hawaii. And that is, first of all, because Hawaii requires that in order to get this evidence, you need either fully informed consent from the arrestee or a warrant. And both of those are deliberative processes that take time. And during that time, alcohol continues to metabolize. So this would allow officers to um, obtain evidence of people who are probably driving over the current legal limit, but because of the time that it takes to obtain this evidence, tests at a lower rate. The second important reason is that we need deterrence. The success of this bill will be measured by the prosecutions that don't happen, by the lives that are not lost. And we believe that that deterrent, which requires people to think before they drink, would send an important message that would save lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Alice Liu, Program Director for uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Good morning. Good morning. Law Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, my name is Alice Liu, Program Director with Mothers Against Drunk Driving Hawaii. We're here today in support of Senate Bill 2384. This bill is supported by evidence and data saving lives in Utah and globally for over 130 countries, actually serves as a pro proactive measure to enhance public safety. And this visionary step is not just about prevent drunk driving, it's about shaping a future where Hawaii thrives as a model of responsible governance. Let's remember that one life lost to drunk driving is one too many, and the decisions made now will resonate in Hawaii's future. Stand with victims and victim survivors. We urge you to create a path that ensures the well-being of our people in Hawaii and leaves a lasting legacy of safety, responsibility, and foresight. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify. I'm here available to answer any questions if you have any. Great, Mahalo. thank you very much. Next is the Oahu Metropolitan Planning Organization in support. Next is Rick Collins for Hawaii Public Health Institute. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Chair Rhodes, uh, Vice Chair Gabbert, and uh, Senator Elefante. My name is Rick Collins. I'm with the Hawaii Alcohol Policy Alliance, which is a program of the Hawaii Public Health Institute. Um, we are in support of SB 2384. Um, just a few points to make uh, from my testimony um, and from the uh, testimony that you've received. Um, there isn't any indication that um, this bill would create more uh, penalties out there. Uh, law enforcement is simply looking for impa impairment in their field sobriety test. Um, and there is no evidence anywhere nationally or internationally um, that rates go up, DUI rates or um, incarceration of those DUI rates go up. Uh, the other thing to note um, is that there is no evidence that it has an impact on the restaurant um, and alcohol industry, that people simply change their behavior and separate drinking and driving. That's the case in Utah, but that's also the case internationally. Um, someone mentioned France. Uh, France has the highest rate of tourism in the world. 
Uh, France has been at a 0 0.05 for a number of years. Uh, it has not impacted tourism there, uh, and they do have lower uh, DUI rates in France. Um, one kind of third and final piece here is one of uh, political calculus that I think you all make, and it's just to say that we recognize that um, this is a difficult decision politically. Um, it was a difficult decision decades ago to put seatbelts in all cars and mandate that, um, but it has saved thousands and thousands of lives. And so um, we just urge you to pass this, support this, um, to save the lives and increase the, the health and wellness of our community. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Next is Joanne Hamaji Oto, Territorial, I mean, Territory Operations Director for Smart Start LLC. And support. Okay, thank you. Next is Omar Masood for Advocates for Highway and Auto Safety on Zoom. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Omar Masood. I'm the Director of State Government Relations for Advocates for Highway and Auto Safety. Advocates is, is an alliance of consumer, medical, public health, law enforcement, safety groups, insurance companies, and agents working to improve road safety. We appreciate this opportunity to provide testimony. Advocates strongly supports SB 2384 to lower the state's BAC limit while driving to 0.05%. At 0.05, the person exhibits reduced coordination, decreased ability to track moving objects, difficulty steering, and diminished response to emergency situations. 0.05% BAC is a proven life-saving solution, effectively used worldwide, but underused in the US. More than 100 countries have 0.05% or lower limits. Alcohol consumption in many of these countries is as much or more than in the United States but drunk driving is much less because lower limits act as a deterrent. Erroneous claims which were used in the 90s to oppose the change in national policy from 0.10 to 0.08 BAC are being recycled now by some members of the hospitality industry. However, the facts are that moving to 0.08% saved approximately 25,000 lives between 1983 and 2014 alone and without adverse impacts on the criminal justice system or the alcohol and hospitality industries. In addition to the horrific death and injury toll, drunk driving also imposes an annual burden of $296 billion. That means that each person in the U.S. essentially pays an annual drunk driving crash tax of nearly $900. It also impacts businesses and costs employers $8 billion, with 81% of that involving crashes while off the job. In conclusion, drunk driving is a deadly and costly threat to Hawaiians and visitors. Advancing SB 2384 will address this preventable danger and keep families whole. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, next up is Aaron Hoff, founder for K Allah Foundation, also on Zoom. They're unavailable on Zoom chair. Okay, in support. Uh, next, we have Benjamin Kopp for uh, Mahalo Ale Works in opposition. Jane Kearns, Big Island Brew House in opposition. Justin Gerber, head brewer, Kauai Beer Company in opposition. Alan Johnson, chair, Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition in support. Uh, Russell Hamilton for Lokahi Treatment Centers in support. Michael Sparks, president for Sparks Initiatives in support. Steve Holmschild, uh, Lanikai Brewing Company in opposition. Shaylee K. Chang for Maui Coalition for Drug Free Youth in support. Garrett Marrero, CEO for Kraft Ohana in opposition. Alicia Sparks, Chair, US Policy, US Alcohol Policy Alliance in support. Lindsay Fernandez for Maikai Cleaning Services in support. Next, we have Ann Shu on Zoom. They're unavailable on Zoom. Uh, there, she's in support. Kawana Bagano, also on Zoom. They're also unavailable on Zoom. In support, next is um, Kamlin Pola. Uh, in person, in support, we have Shannon Matson. In support, Cynthia Okazaki on Zoom. They're unavailable on Zoom. In support, um, Joanna Beretta, also on Zoom. There you are. Good morning. Good morning. 
Aloha and good morning to everyone. I'm Joanna Beretta, a local resident of Hawaii my entire life. There are many reasons that I am in support of this bill. My main reason is to hold citizens to be responsible and abide by this new law. I feel if this law is passed, we have a chance of decreasing the probability of drunk driving and safe innocent lives. It will hold us more accountable because I personally have lost friends that were driving on their way home from work to his family, but never made it home because of another person's poor choices and was not at, and, and was not acting like a responsible citizen. Now his children are left without a father and no can, can no longer create memories with his children, leaving his family broken and left without a father because of someone else's poor choices. I personally have a stepdaughter that was nearly killed by a drunk driver so young, she had her pelvis broke in but in a drunk driving accident at 11 in the morning. It, it affected her ability to have children. I consider us fortunate that she is alive, but so many mothers and fathers have lost their children and loved ones to drunk driving. We must understand that driving impaired is still driving under the influence. We must understand that driving impaired is still driving under the influence. It is difficult enough to drive in Hawaii traffic perfectly sober and unimpaired. To add merely a couple of drinks to an eight hour workday and heavy traffic is a recipe for disaster. Most accidents are minor mistakes that could have been corrected with, with reaction time. That is, that time is severely affected when alcohol is involved. Hawaii is the greatest place to call home for me and to my local families and tourists who also love these islands. We want to continue to preserve the heart of Kama'aina and Kanaka for all of our families and visitors, visitors to keep keeping our travels safe so that the term paradise can still be used when referring to our great islands. I ask that you please lower the BAC to 0 0.5 when all can enjoy Good. peace. Thank you, very, thank you very much. Your time's expired. Thanks for being here. Uh, next. Okay, hang on just one second. Uh, next is Cynthia Okazaki on Zoom. Good morning. Uh, you're Hi. muted. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Chair Rhodes and Vice Chair um, Gabbard and members of the committee. I just want to stand on my written testimony, but I wanted to emphasize a few things. Um, as was stated, Utah is the only state that has adopted this 0.05%, but as was stated, 85% of the world's population already has adopted <clears throat> for alcohol impaired driving at 0.05 BAC or lower. The other thing stated was that um, revenues might be limited to the state because of this change. But the report from Utah say, stated that alcohol sales sales tax revenues from restaurants, rental cars, hotels, air travel, and resort sales continue to trend upward following the implementation of the 0 0.05 BAC law in Utah. The other thing is in December 2022, a statewide poll revealed that more than two thirds of Hawaii voters supported lowering the BAC limit for alcohol impaired driving from 0.08 to 0.05%. Hawaii can set a new BAC standard. This law would improve the overall health and safety of all people in Hawaii. Lowering the BAC limit to 0.05 is not about drinking. It is about separating drinking from driving. It is about preventing crashes, injuries, and deaths, and creating safer roads for all people. I urge you to pass SB 2384 out of committee. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Shannon Matson, I believe was the, yeah. Good morning. Thank you, Chair. Aloha, Senators. Is this on? Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Shannon Matson. I'm from Hawaii Island. Um, I'm actually here to testify on the next bill, but I heard this one was up too, and I thought I should say a couple words about it. Um, I really enjoy drinking. I, that's my one vice. 
Um, and I, I don't smoke, I don't do anything else, uh, but I really do enjoy drinking. I love to have a Pauhana. Um, I'm actually an investor of Ola Brewing Company, and I think they're doing an amazing job. Uh, and I'm in support of this bill because sometimes one drink turns into two, sometimes it turns into three, sometimes I forget to eat before I have a beverage. And if I knew that there were even stricter laws where there was no gray area where I'm sitting there going, you know, I might be um, impaired enough to drive because once you start drinking, you kind of lose that line. Um, I would appreciate it as a responsible member of my community. I don't ever want to injure anyone. I don't want to injure myself. Um, I think that laws are important. They're here for a reason. And if we can have some stricter uh, blood alcohol content laws, I think that that would encourage me as well as others in our community who want to do the right thing to know that there's no question. If you're, if you're, you had a couple of beverages, you need to find another way home. You need to call someone for a ride or you need to make sure you're already home before, um, before getting behind the wheel um, and before enjoying a beverage or two. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um... That is everyone who has signed up to testify in person or on Zoom on SB 2384. Does anyone else wish to testify on SB 2384 on Zoom or not? Okay, so the total count on SB 2384 was 62 in support, 10 opposed, and one comment. And members, questions? Senator Elefante. I have a question for the public defenders. I believe, Miss is it Miss Haley? Thank you, Chair. Hi, great morning. Thank you for your testimony. In reviewing your testimony, I know you um, mentioned and referenced the state of Utah. However, I'm just curious to know if you're able to provide this committee with clients that the PD's office represents that would fall under this category, and if you have a figure for that. Oh, um, I don't have a figure for that off the top of my head. Um, so would it be those that have over 0.08 that cause a yeah, now. similar to how, I don't know if you read DOT's testimony, they provided statistics. I didn't see that in the PD's testimony. I was just curious to know. Um, I don't have that figure, but I can try and get it. <laughs> okay. But no, I don't have that off the top of my head. We okay. don't keep those sorts of statistics about our individual clients. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Other questions or concerns? Okay, thank you. Uh, if not, we'll go ahead and move on to the next bill, SP. Hey, excuse me. Can I testify? Oh, yeah, sure. Come on up. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm from Wayne. I'm on a coolie side. I want to thank uh, Chair sorry, do you mind just I'm talk, Ed talk? Werner. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair Carr and uh, Mike Gabbard and Senator uh, Brendan. Uh, my name is Ed Werner. Um, you know, as, as I sit here and, and I hear what the public defenders and all these alcohol establishments doing, you know, they can blow air and this and that, but at the end of the night, are they there to, to make sure these guys are consuming alcohol gets home safely without killing? As I sit here, I had four family members that got killed by impaired driving. You guys know my son, Kalana. I came to the system and, um, fighting for, uh, we, we now have a Kalana law out there. I, I think, uh, and I know um, this BSC level, I think it's very important to move in the right directions. You know, our court system fails us, our judiciary system fails us, and you guys know that. You know, I, I'm here representing a lot of the victims that I know here that lost their loved ones by impaired driving. Those guys don't have no responsibility. Um, getting behind the wheel and 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 consuming all I, I I got nothing against drinking. The line draws when you get behind the wheel. You know, losing my 19-year-old son was devastating. I don't know if anybody sitting in here lost um, you know, a son, a daughter, or even four family members. You know, I I've been working hard for years. And with the state, with HPD, with the city, and with my community. I've been doing this for years because I don't want nobody else to go through what we've been going through for the past seven years. He was my only son. 
You know, uh, I'm not going to be here to watch him get married, watch my grandkids. It's done. It's done for. You know, this drinking and driving is 100% preventable. I don't care if you had one beer or two beers. Sorry, Mr. Warren. The, the, the problem with this is we need you guys to do what is right. I'm not here just to blow. Thank yeah. You. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm out there and, and um, I'm bringing it. You know, it's, so, so, it's, it's a shame. But, you know, does anyone have you guys questions to, to for help Mr. Warren? Us. If not, thank you very much for being here. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, let's go ahead and move on to the next bill. Oh, I'm sorry? On this current bill? Oh, yeah, sure. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Aloha, Chairman Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, and committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to. Do you mind just telling us your name? My name is Claire Barnes. Um, I'm a student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and I'm currently studying social work. Um, I believe that in, any alcohol in the system impair, can impair a driver, and those who are into, intoxicated can um, in, can have a major impact on drivers, bicyclists, pedestrians, um, putting their safety at risk. Um, lowering the BAC would deter people from driving impaired. In this day and age where ride apps are available, such as Lyft and Uber, buses and taxis, no one should have to die from an intoxicated driver who could have used any other form of transportation instead of getting behind the wheel. Um, lowering the BAC to 0.5 is not about drinking and driving. It's about making people consider other modes of transportation rather than driving after drinking, which will prevent crashes, injuries, and deaths and create safer streets for everyone in the state of Hawaii. I ask you to pass SB 2384. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Anyone else? Would, okay, so <laughs> would anyone else like to testify in SB 2384? Going once, going twice. Okay, come on up. Good morning. Doesn't matter. I am a mother. I was a mother. I am a daughter. I was a daughter. Do you mind just telling us your name? My name is Esther Lau. Thank you. Uh, 50 years ago, I lost my mother to a drunk driver. I was, I was living on the mainland and to get that dreaded phone call, I should never want to see anyone experience that ever. It is the most devastating thing that has ever happened to me. That's what I thought. But five years ago, I lost a son in the Kaka'ako crash. We were not able to see him. The mortuary would not allow us to view his body because of the amount of damage that, was, that he had sustained. If I had just one more time, one more opportunity to hold him in my arms to say goodbye, this should not have happened. And I hope to God that this never ever happens to any one of you because it ruined my life and my daughter's life and my husband. And we move on because that's the right thing to do. And we are in support of this bill and I'm hoping and praying that you all can feel the sensitivity, have the sensitivity of knowing that it could happen to you. And unfortunately, Sometimes I wonder, maybe it should happen to you so that you can see how devastating it is to lose a life. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would anyone else like to testify on SB 2384? I know it's hard for some people to do this, so if you, if you want to. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Paula Warner. Can you, I'm sorry, can you just pull the mic closer to you? Uh, thank you. Thank you. That's good. Good morning to all of you. My name is Paula Warner, and I'm here to support this bill. My son, Kalana Warner, was killed by a drunk driver almost eight years ago. He came home from college. He kept promising me, Mommy, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to do good in school. 
and I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna take care of you. Take care of you and dad. He went off to college and came back for break. And he was struck as he was on the side of the road, went to practice to the park. He was struck by a drunk driver passing our home about over a hundred miles. She struck him and she ran away. She left him there. And while everyone was coming to my home, I was saying, oh, you're stuck in traffic. Come, come, come inside the house. Go down the hallway and you, the bathroom is on the left side. Not knowing that they were coming to save me. <laughs> Give me their love and a love. And I didn't know that my son was laying across the street in his daddy's arms. It's the most, most hurtful, hurtful thing ever. I ask you all to support this film because no one should go through what we went through or any of the other victims. My husband tried so hard to fight. I was started to fight, but I no longer can fight. This has taken a whole toll on my life. Thank you. Thank you so much. For... So I just ask you all to just please consider this. Thank you so much for testifying. Uh -huh. Would anyone else like to testify in SB 2384? Uh, members, any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for being here. We'll move on to SB 2692. This relates to dangerous dogs, establishes requirements and penalties for owners of dangerous dogs. Uh, first up on 2692 is Kelsey K. Nagata or Brian T. Yee at Deputy Attorney General's. Um, on Zoom, maybe? Oh, you're here. Okay, good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, uh, members of the committee, Kelsey Nagata, Deputy Attorney General, providing comments on SB 2692. Uh, the bill as written does not presently provide a process for dog owners with a method to challenge or contest the declaration, seizure, or impoundment of a dangerous dog beyond the recession period of three years. Uh, without such process, the bill may be subject to challenge under the due process clause. We have provided wording in our written testimony that would provide a procedure for an owner to challenge or appeal the declaration of a dangerous dog and the seizure and impoundment of a dangerous dog. We also have suggested additional revisions to the bill to ensure that the wording is clear and consistent. These revisions would also reduce the risk of confusion for all entities involved in the enforcement and court processes. I will be available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is... Karen Tomasa, Deputy Public Defender, or someone else from the Public Defender's Office. Yes. Good uh, morning, again. Good morning. Uh, again, it's Sarah Haley with the Office of the Public Defender. Um, my colleagues submitted testimony, but I'll be providing um, in-person testimony. Um, we oppose this bill. Um, as was already mentioned, there are a number of um, constitutional issues, including due process, um, as well as equal protection issues with um, this proposed law as written. Um, uh, I'll second the discussion that there is no process for the dog owner. So there's no way for them to challenge the decision um, or to bring their own evidence. Um, I'd also note that uh, we uh, do feel that since there are county ordinances that punish this as a misdemeanor, that that would uh, then, and then this would be a state law that is punishing it as a felony. There would also be an equal protection and due process um, constitutional violation for that reason. Basically, if you do the same acts, you could be looking at a misdemeanor or you could be looking at a class C felony with a mandatory minimum. Um, <clears throat> we also have concerns with the police officer making a probable cause determination um, that again is not reviewable by the court. Um, oh, I have limited time. These are somewhat complicated legal issues, so I would point you to our written testimony that goes in more detail. But just one issue that we saw in that section, um, for example, is that 
They are talking about um, evidence admissible in court. Police officers are not attorneys. Um, that's not a designation that they would be qualified to make. Um, finally, we would note that we have concerns about having a mandatory prison sentence of one year that would take um, the discretion away from the court. We wouldn't have options such as probation. Um, further, this is um, a negligence conduct uh, offense, so you would be having a very severe punishment for a negligent state of mind. So for those reasons, as well as what's in our written testimony, we oppose this bill. All right, thank you. Next is Rebecca Villegas, council member for Hawaii County Council in support. Uh, Kelton Walton, Kelton Walton, prosecuting attorney for Maui on Zoom, perhaps. They are here on Zoom, Chair. Good morning again, prosecutor. Hello, Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, committee members, Hawaii County Prosecuting Attorney, Keldon Walgen. Our office supports this bill. The bill is a step in the right direction to address growing concerns surrounding dangerous dog attacks, uh, holding irresponsible owners accountable, and protecting people in our community. This issue hits uh, close to home for me and my family. Back in August of 2021, my auntie, my uncle, her husband, and my other uncle were all attacked by their neighbor's dogs. My auntie was killed, and my uncles uh, both sustained serious injuries. Hawaii County officials and our office all recognize the need to create a law with appropriate felony penalties. In, in April of 2022, the Hawaii County Council passed Bill 125 into law to, uh, to, in, in an attempt to create felony level penalties for dog attacks. Uh, unfortunately, the code is preempted by existing state law. As a result, this time under our current county code, the most serious penalty uh, related to a dog attack resulting in a death or a serious um, bodily injury is, is a petty misdemeanor. Um, simply put, our hands are tied. Since my auntie's death, there have been subsequent dog attacks where other victims have also lost their lives, and my thoughts and prayers go out, go out to them and their families. That's why we're here today. Um, our community wants to address this issue. On, on February 6th of this year, the Hawaii County Council Committee on Governmental Operations and External Affairs recommended the adoption of Resolution Number 430-24, uh, urging the state legislature to amend Chapter 142 to provide for greater public safety against the risk of damage, injury, and death posed by dangerous dogs by increasing enforcement and penalties against dangerous dog owners. These concerns are not just a Hawaii Island issue and are shared across our state. Our Hawaii State Association of Counties um, also recognize this issue as their number one legislative priority this session. We hope this legislation will hold offenders accountable, also de deter and inhibit future incidents by encouraging dog owners to take appropriate measures. Let's work together to ensure public safety, remember victims, and protect our communities. Mahalo for the opportunity to testify today and for your consideration. We submit our written input. I'm available to answer any questions. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, next is Jen Kagiwada, council member for Hawaii County Council in support. Next is Sylvia Delena for Aloha Animal Advocates on Zoom, perhaps. Good morning. Committee. Vice Chair and Chair and members. I'm Sylvia Dolina, co-founder of Aloha Animal Advocates and Vice President of Love Those Dog Paws. I am in favor and support animals, animal welfare and animal care. However, this is a crisis situation with dog attacks increasing every year. In 2020, dog attacks on Hawaii Island were at 107. In 2021, dog attacks were at 185. In 2022, there were 231 dog attacks, and in 2023, 279 dog attacks. In preparation for a submission, submission of Bill 125 mm -hmm. by Councilwoman Ashley Kirkowitz on Hawaii Island, I did some research and I asked all victims mm -hmm of dog attacks or families of the victims to fill out an incident report. I received over a hundred incident reports. And the issue is that 60% were never reported to the police. The main reason was because people felt that nothing would be done because the laws were not strong enough. So that's 60%. When I look at these numbers, over 500 in the last two years and 60% were unreported. What does, what does that number increase to? So please support 2692 and please let's have stronger laws with increased significant penalties that will act as deterrence. We need laws on the books. The County of Hawaii, as the prosecutor's office was saying, 
their hands are tied. They want to help. They want to do something, yet nothing can be done. And that's why people are very demoralized and upset and frustrated because they're suffering and nothing can be done about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, next up is Stephanie Kendrick for Hawaiian Humane Society. Good morning. Aloha Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, Senators Elefante and San Buenaventura, Stephanie Kendrick from the Hawaiian Humane Society. We're in strong support of this bill and you have our written testimony which offers details. Uh, we did um, work with the animal welfare organizations, the largest animal welfare organizations across the state, as well as police and prosecutors across the state to come up with the language in this measure. We think it uh, does a good job of balancing the interests of animal welfare with the interests of community safety. Among the provisions that are um, intended to also protect the animals are the provisions that would help us move animals through the system more quickly if they're involved in these cases. Currently, the way the county laws are written, these animals can be confined in cages for a year or more at the time as uh, they move through the court system, and that winds up being a bad result for everyone involved. So um, it's a, I know it's a long, complicated bill, but um, it will improve our ability to enforce these laws in all of the counties, and we would ask for the committee's support. We do uh, are grateful, actually, for the AG's uh, comments regarding some of the due process issues. Uh, we tried to get all that sorted out before introduction, um, but it looks like we still have some more work to do, and we're happy to, to continue doing that work because we want to make sure that this is a really sound and um, effective piece of legislation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Phil. I'm Gidry, JD, Director for American Kennel Club Incorporated. Uh, in opposition, John Bickle, President of Americans for Democratic Action Hawaii. Uh, in support, next is Marion Hussenbucks for Animal Interfaith Alliance in Britain. In support, I guess we've made the international news on that one. <laughs> Teresa Tico. There, there you are. Good morning. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, committee. Thank you for the opportunity to hear the public. Um, my name is Teresa Tico. I'm a resident of the county of Kauai. I've been an attorney in private practice on Kauai for 46 years now. Throughout my law practice, I've handled dog bite cases periodically. I am absolutely alarmed by the increase in dog attacks and serious injuries that I see in my clients that since COVID. This is the attacks have increased at such an alarming rate that um, I, I don't I just don't know what to do <laughs> other than to plead with you to pass this law with stricter teeth. Excuse the metaphor, but um, <laughs> I, I am uh, a little concerned about the penalties. If you turn to page nine of your bill, section one forty two, negligent failure to control a dangerous dog, person who's an owner of a dangerous dog allows that dog to get out and maim or cause serious injury or death to another animal or bodily injury to a person other than the owner is charged with a mere misdemeanor. You don't think a misdemeanor is gonna do it. I really think this should be a class C felony. And as far as the next section, if that dog inflicts serious bodily injury to or the death of a person other than the owner, the penalty or the charge is a class C felony. I do believe that this should be a class B felony. So my concerns with this bill is that the penalties are not strict enough. Uh, personally, they should be stricter. The problem that we have now is that we just don't have these strict, strict enough laws in our county ordinances. I heard the public defender say we have misdemeanors, but they're not misdemeanors. They're only petty misdemeanors for dangerous dog violation, at least in the county of Kauai. And I heard the honorable council person say in the county of Hawaii, these are only, this, this is the most serious crime that a person can be charged with if their dog inflicts serious bodily injury or death. It's a petty misdemeanor in those counties. And I believe you can correct me if I, I'm wrong, but I believe it's a petty misdemeanor in the city and county of Honolulu. Thank so you, please um, pass this law so that we may have stricter Next is penalties. Deborah Ward, Deborah Ward in support. Uh, Shannon Manson. Morning again. 
Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, and Senators. Uh, my name is Shannon Matson from Hawaii Island, and I'm testifying in strong support of SB 2692. Um, I'm very glad to see my senator here, uh, as many of the recent attacks um, and some of the deaths have occurred in her district. My father, Bob Northrup, was killed in August of last year in Ocean View by four loose dogs that I believe attacked another individual months prior. As I have continued to advocate for stricter laws since then and better enforcement of our current laws and any sort of accountability for the dog owners, I was told that there is no state legislation regarding dog owners if a dog injures or kills another human or animal. My understanding is that this bill would fix that oversight. Um, I wanted to be sure to mention that I do agree with the suggestions made by the Attorney General and Hawaii Animal Welfare Association. Also, while I agree overall with this bill and I'm very grateful to see it moving forward, um, I think that the potential criminal penalties are too low when compared to similar crimes resulting in death of another human, such as vehicular manslaughter. I believe that the bill should state that a person whose dog causes serious bodily injury, um, long-term life-threatening injuries, or death should be exposed to a potential penalty of up to 10 years imprisonment, which is the potential punishment for vehicular manslaughter. This would also bring this bill into alignment with the comprehensive and widely supported Hawaii County Ordinance that was passed on this topic in 2022. While, of course, a more severe punishment would only be used in the most severe of cases, it seems wrong to not allow for a potential Class B felony if an attack results in death, especially if these dogs have been declared dangerous in the past. Please make an amendment to this bill to be sure that it will truly allow future victims and their families to seek the full justice they deserve and make our community safer. Also, I'm very upset and confused as I listen to the testimony from the Public Defender's Office. It conflicts with what we are being told by our county prosecuting office. Senators, I urge you to dig into this. I'm almost finished if you if you give me a leeway. Um, please get clarity. Yeah, Ask them. I'm yep. sorry. Thank you. Thank you. This, that's everybody we have who signed up on S to testify in person or on Zoom on SB 2692. Okay. Yep. Uh, you can come first and then. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Michelle Edwards. I'm a 40-year resident of Kauai, and uh, I was attacked by a loose pit bull on December 6th, un unleashed on a public beach. My dog was leashed. He attacked me and pushed me out of the way. Here's a picture of the dog. The owner covered. This is the boyfriend of the owner, covered his head with a towel, refused to give me any information. Um, this was my hand. My dog was killed. I had to get on my hands and knees and bite the dog in, his, in the ear to get him to let go. Subsequently, so find out that the police wanted to do nothing. Um, I managed to hire a, a private investigator and track the people down and manage to get uh, an arraignment. The court case hasn't happened yet, but uh, I'm totally in support of 2692, but it's not strict enough. Um, under this, the killing of my dog would only be a misdemeanor, and this is not a misdemeanor. And also, um, Shannon's father being killed, that needs to be a Class B felony, please. And uh, a dog being killed is a Class C. For those of you who are not aware of the frequency of dog attacks, four and a half million people in the U.S. are bitten by dogs each year. 800,000 of those require serious medical treatment. 50 people a year are killed by dangerous dogs. To give you some perspective, bears only kill one to two people a year. Coyotes have only killed two people in 100 years. Now, we get up in arms about coyotes or bears. Um, but people are not leashing their dogs, and they need to be held accountable. And so, although I agree with the bill, um, there really needs to be stricter penalties. And also, if a dog kills another dog or livestock, which is in the tens of thousands every year, um, dogs are killed by dangerous dogs, um, the victim should be able to request euthanization. Because what's happening is people are feeling, blaming the owners. Thank you very much. There was someone else over here who wanted to testify. Good morning. 
My name is Heidi Sagadin. Um, my dog was mauled by a loose, dangerous dog in my neighborhood. Um, the only way that he wasn't killed was because I had to scream my bloody head off and grab him, and I was bit too. I had to go to emergency care. Um, the owner of the dangerous dog is completely irresponsible. I mean, the existing laws now are laughable. It's insane that people's dogs can kill people. They can kill other dogs and get away with it. And going through this system takes so long. It's insane. And these people that own dangerous dogs need to be need to understand that it's a serious thing to have a dangerous dog that you let off leash, that these leash laws are so loose and people are, dogs are getting killed on the beaches, dogs are getting killed in neighborhoods and nothing happens. And it's literally, I mean, I can't even believe that the laws existing now are as they are and as Michelle was saying, and Shannon, it needs to be even way more strict than this bill presents. But I'm grateful at least something is coming up, something is being done, because the increase in the past few years is insane. It's over 75% since COVID. And so much dogs is being killed. I'm from Oahu, I live on Kauai now. My dog almost got killed, and please, this is this is this is serious and it's only going to get worse people need to understand that you can't just let your dog off leash on a beach or wherever this is this is not okay and people are i'm having a hard time holding it together because i love my dog so much and i also lost my son and this is this is if people understand the seriousness that please pass this and make it more serious. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to testify on SB 2692? SB 2692. Oh, oh yeah, come on up. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the open testimony availability. availability. Um, my name is Barry O'Donnie. Um, sometimes I see, I see the leash laws are a joke. Uh, Went to Blaisdell Park, the dogs are running free. Uh, you see some people, I don't think you can tell, you can kind of tell, they can't control their dog. Uh, walking on the sidewalk by IA, the dogs almost bit me and if the guy didn't even hold them, although the dog went all the way into the sidewalk and had to run, run into the road. If he let go of the dog, had no leash, I probably would have been attacked. So um, I would, haven't read full of the, full of this bill. So I would support um, better controls. Uh, also, probably supporting arming citizens more so because when you're in the park alone, what can you do when someone's dog attacks you? So that's uh, one reason for being armed for myself, because I'm afraid to go to the park by my house, by my house because of how much dogs are over there. You know, supposed to be the only service dogs? No, they're just plain old dogs just running around. So please don't park. Uh, how about the park up in St. Louis Heights? Dogs are running loose. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to testify in SB 2692? 26, okay, members, questions? Senator Alfonte. Yeah, I have a question for Hawaii County Prosecutor Keldon Walchin, if he's still on Zoom. Still there, Prosecutor? No, they're unavailable on Zoom. Okay, sure. it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, other questions? Uh, could I have Miss Matson up again? If you're still here, yeah. Um, so my question is, what what were you going to say after I cut you off? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, this is. I wish Keldon, um, prosecuting attorney Keldon Walton, was still on the call because I was urging all of you senators, please, um, to clarify. Maybe call the public defender's office back up. Um, and get some clarity because we're being told by all of the counties, um, every single county is saying that they can't prosecute, and yet the public defender's office is saying this is duplicative. Um, so I'm confused. As as a as my father was a victim of a dog attack, 
why are charges not being brought it's seven months forward they're saying that they can't um even though we have a law on the books at the county level they're saying that this is necessary to do this at the state level so it's um, if it is duplicative, it's not being duplicated very well because it's not serving any of us who are demanding justice for our loved ones. The public has certain expectations that the state and county are there to protect our communities. When awful things happen, there are supposed to be systems in place to help prevent those things from happening again and provide justice to families and victims. And as more and more I delve into this issue, I'm hearing the same disappointing stories across our Paiaina of attacks resulting in physical and emotional trauma with no consequences for those responsible. It's perpetuating a cycle of lack of accountability. And um, while we have some of these intelligent people who are prosecuting these sort of things, I, I think we need to get clarity here. We need a culture shift of dog owners taking responsible, responsibility for their pets and their actions, and we need a shift for animal welfare and human safety. So please pass this bill, get clarity um, in memory of my dad and all other human and animal victims, and step up to help hold dog owners accountable. Thank you so much for the added time. Thank you. Other questions, members? <laughs> yeah, Senator Alfonte. Maybe my question can be directed to the AG's office. If um, I believe it's Miss Nagata. Yeah. Hi. Welcome back. Hello. Hi. Thank you for your testimony. I know you in your testimony you provided some written comments in terms of suggest suggestive language on officers. Yes. So currently how it's written, um, and I'm just help me to understand and the committee to understand the process. So if someone sees a dangerous dog. They ha do they and currently how, how I read the bill is you, you would have to re report it to a law enforcement officer. Is that the correct understanding of it? That's how we are interpreting the bill as written so far. Okay. Now, what if, and you know, I appreciate the testimony from those I've shared today, you know, what if the officer doesn't respond in a timely manner and it's sort of after the fact, then what recourse does the person have from, from that point? Uh, I don't know if I'm the right entity to speak on that in terms of the procedure of the police department. Um, but in relation to your question about officer, uh, as we noted in our testimony, there are some inconsistencies as okay. to what officer means. Uh, as the bill written says that it's statute, I'm sorry, Hawaii Rai Statutes 143-1, which includes uh, sheriffs, deputies, uh, animal control officers, and law enforcement officers for counties with a population under 100,000, which I believe currently only is a county of Kauai. Uh, so if the legislature does intend to include police officers in counties, sorry, county police officers in counties of population greater than 100,000, then the legislature uh, may make the recommended, um, some of the changes that we have and, provided. And in your analysis, that would also include the Linares do care officers as well? Uh, I don't currently know what um, powers DoCare has in terms of enforcement across the state, but it, in term, and especially under the powers of DLNR, but um, I'd be happy to get that information okay. for you. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Members, other questions? Okay, let's uh, move on to the next bill, which is SB 3236. Okay, SB 3236 clarifies that if no personal property designation appears in the recorded instruments, the in interest of the beneficiary shall be real property. Um, first up on this is Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Good morning. Good morning, Chair and Vice Chair and members of the committee. My name is Kali Watson. I'm the Chairman and Director of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Uh, this particular bill is about fixing a funding approach used by DHHL, which results in a 15-year delay in the award of the homestead lease. By separating the land from the vertical construction, which is uh, funded by tax credits, DHHL can make a 99-year homestead lease upfront. Uh, under the existing uh, light tech rent to own or option to purchase program, if the participant dies within the 15 year tax compliance period, uh, their heir is on, and the heir is only 25%, uh, 
uh, they get nothing. So the law treats both the land as well as the vertical construction as real property, and as such, the HHL can uh, issue a lease uh, for the, the land separated from the vertical construction. This particular uh, change will affect quite a few of our future projects. We have about 28 projects planned. Uh, quite a few of them involve this option of a LIHTC rent to own. Uh, it will also affect our project on Kauai and Kapa, the townhouses of Waipauli, as well as our Bolo, Bolo Drone project, which is a high rise, as well as uh, some of the uh, projects we have, especially in uh, Kapole, as well as Leili, as well as uh, in Kona. So there's a, a change in law that uh, I think is uh, very much needed. Uh, the legal counsel that we hired suggested this change. So we asked for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's the only testifier on SP 3236. Does anyone else would suggest on SP 3236 here on Zoom? Seeing none, members questions? Seeing none, I think we're ready to vote on the this agenda, if that's okay with everyone. Okay, we'll go back to the top of the agenda, which is SB 2384, relating to the use of intoxicants while operating a motor vehicle. This would lower the lo blood alcohol concentration threshold for driving while under the influence from 0.08 to 0.05. Recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair Gabbard. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2384 as is. Uh, Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair Rhodes, aye. Senator Alexander. Aye. Senator San Buenaventura. Reservations. Senator Owash. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Aye. Measure passes. Thanks very much, members. Next up is SB 2692. This establishes requirements and penalties for owners of dangerous dogs. Our recommendation here is to pass with a lengthy list of amendments, so bear with me. Um, from, I'd like to accept from the animal, Hawaii Animal Welfare Association's amendment to insert clarifying language clarifying that the leash worn by a dangerous dog must be fixed and secure. Insert language clarifying that the muzzle worn by a dangerous dog must be properly fitted, a properly fitted basket. Insert language clarifying that the signs displayed by owners shall be provided by the Animal Control Authority. Also, like to accept several of the Attorney General's amendments. We'd like to add a new subsection which provides for an appeals process. We'll delete, delete references to HRS sections which are redundant with HRS 711 1109.1. Reword the language to provide officers with legal authority to seize and impound dangerous dogs with indemnification against liability. Delete redundant language about impoundment. Change the term serious, serious bodily injury to substantial bodily injury and define it according to HRS 707 700. Replace humanely destroyed with euthanized, revise the definition of animal control authority to no longer include private contractors. Additionally, I'd like to make the following amendments to change serious injury to a domestic animal to serious injury to any animal and replace the term enforcement officer with law enforcement officer. Sorry, say again. Would you make oh, to any animal. I'm sorry. So. Okay, I'm sorry, just going over the change, serious injury to a domestic animal to substantial energy, energy, substantial injury to any animal. Okay, and I replace the term enforcement officer with law enforcement officer, and I'm sure there'll be you know, conforming in tech amendments as well. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. And Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2692 with amendments, with noting all members present. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 3236, clarifies that if no personal property designation appears in the recorded record, the entrance of the beneficiary shall be real property. Um, the recommendation on this one is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Recommendations to pass SB 3236 as is. Members present, any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Okay, members, before we move on to our 933 agenda, um, well, I'm going to uh, adjourn the earlier one and we're going to take a short break before we go to the long series of votes. So come back at
Okay, coming back in for decision making on a number of bills. Um, our 930, we're to our 933 agenda, which is SB 3196, which as I mentioned uh, about an hour ago, was that we would um, put that to the very end of calendar so that uh, Senator Joyce San Bonacanchero could be here. So since she's not here again, we will uh, go ahead and move on to the main agenda and put this at the very end. Okay, on our 10 o'clock agenda, first up is SB 30. 43 relating to the Small Business Regulatory Review Board. Um, this clarifies that the Small Business Regulatory Review Board has the authority to review legislation affecting small businesses in response to requests from small business owners. Recommendation here, well, it's not a recommendation. I'm just going to defer it. The, the House bill has already um, passed its last committee, and so we'll just wait for the House version. Okay, that's that one. Next is 1326 relating to pesticides. This replaces representatives from the sugar and pineapple industries with representatives of the coffee and diversified ag industries. Recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. Recommendation on SB 3026 is to pass as is. Chair Rhodes? Aye. Vice Chair Rhodes, aye. Senator Elefante? Aye. Senator San Buenaventura? Excuse. Senator Owa? Aye. Measure passes. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 3025, repeals the requirement for additional rules by the Department of Ag to address nuisance issues, including smell, noise, and excessive lighting arising out of the activity of hemp growers. Uh, the recommendation here is also to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing on Vice Chair. Recommendation is to pass as is on SB 3025. With all members present, any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 30. Uh, 3016, this allows all United States military reservations and military training facilities in the state to display the Hawaiian flag. Uh, well, I'm very sympathetic, and I think the, the military reservation should fly the Hawaiian flag. The bill doesn't really do anything because the, all the bases and the military installations can fly the Hawaiian flag now. So I'm going to defer it, and maybe a reso encouraging them to do so would be in order. SB, two, SB 2997 requires each electric utility to have a risk-based wild fire protection plan, which will be filed with and approved by the Public Utilities Commission. Uh, I suggest that we pass it forward with technical amendments and with a deferred a def effective date of April 14, 2112. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Chair's recommendation to pass SB 2997 with amendments. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 2992. This be beginning July 1st, 2025, and every 10 years thereafter requires the Department of Health to convene an advisory committee on mental health mm -hmm. code review. Uh, recommendation here uh, with the uh, Chair San Buenaman Chura's prior concurrence, I believe. Uh, we'll go ahead and um, add an, a rep to the advisory committee from private acute care hospitals who make who provide psychiatric treatment. This is per the Queen's testimony. That, that person would be chosen by the governor. And we'll add a representative from Hawaii, Hawaii Health Systems Corporation for their request, also chosen by the governor. And we'd like to move the reporting dates from 20 days before the start of the legislative session, I mean, to 40 days. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, so those are recommended amendments. Any questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2992 with amendments. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 2983. This regulates charitable fundraising platforms and activities of platform charities during declared federal disasters. The recommendation here is to pass unamended as it already has a defective date. Questions or concerns? As is. Thank you. Oh, did we? I'm sorry. Okay, we'll do the technical amendments and leave the, and leave the defective date. Sorry about that, Vice Chair. Okay, that's okay. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 2977 makes it unlawful for an unlicensed contractor to offer or, per to, or perform repairs or improvements to a residential or non-residential structure or property for damage or destruction caused by a natural disaster. 
recommendation on SB 2977 is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? <coughs> Seeing one, Vice Chair. On SB 2977, are there any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, measure <coughs> passes. Next, thank you. Next up is SB 2960 requires that lessees and purchasers of farm lots and ranch lots use that land for farming and producing food, authorizes agricultural cooperatives to apply for farmlands. Uh, the recommendation here is to pass as is. It does have a defective date already. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. On SB 2960 as is. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 2948. This authorizes residential uses in areas zoned for commercial to be considered permitted as long as the residential use is limited by ordinance to floors above the ground floor. Uh, the recommendation here is to pass with technical amendments and to put a and to put an effective date of hang on just a second yeah okay that's right put an, an effective date of january 1st 2025 technical amendments and i'd like to add language to the committee report that highlights the disadvantages of having no zoning at all such as in houston texas and future committees may wish to consider amendments specifying minimum requirements for people with communication and mobility disabilities so that will all be in this in the committee report Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. On SB 2948, are there any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Thanks, members. Next up is SB 2945 relating to transportation establishes a task force to conduct a statewide study on the accessibility of ignition interlock devices and any national best practices. Uh, recommendations to pass with technical amendments only. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. On SB 2945, are there any no votes or reservations? No. One no vote for Senator Owa. Measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 2937. This repeals the sunset date for the exemption of laboratory school programs of the Hawaiian Language College at the University of Hawaii at Hilo from state English medium standards, assessments, performance ratings, staff qualifications, and staff training requirements. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, recommendation here is to pass with technical amendments only. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. On SB 2937, are there any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Okay, thank you. Next up is SB 2859, authorizes the use of a master certificate of title for new common interest communities to simplify and streamline the operation of the land court. Uh, recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. On SB 2859, any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 2845. This prohibits a person from selling ammunition to a person under the age of 21. Prohibits a person under the age of 21 from owning, possessing, or controlling ammunition with exceptions. Uh, the recommendation here. It is to pass with amendments to accept several amendments to improve and clarify the bill from the Department of the Attorney General. Uh, specify that the prohibition on selling ammunition to a person under the age of 21 does not apply to a person who is authorized to possess a firearm under Section 134.5 and is actually engaged in hunting or target shooting or traveling to those places. Specify that the required state of mind for unlawfully selling ammunition to a person under the age of 21 is intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly. Require that the seller check the government issued photo ID of the buyer and clarify that the affirmative defense is that the seller reason, reasonably relied on the government issued ID. And simplify the exceptions for under 21 possession of ammunition by referencing existing exceptions in other statutes. I'll add a savings clause and I think that's it. No, so when we do have prior concurrence. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. On SB 2845, are there any no votes or reservations? No. And Vice Chair votes no. Measure passes. Okay, thank you. Next up is SB 2832, specifies that the counties may issue traffic infractions for violations of any law prohibiting or restricting the stopping 
standing or parking of vehicles on all highways. Uh, recommendation on 2832 is to pass unamended. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. On SB 2832, pass as is. Any no votes or reservations? No. No vote for Senator Owa. Measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 2819. This requires slow moving vehicles on a two lane highway behind which five vehicles are formed in a line to pull over where possible to let the traffic, the trailing vehicles proceed when passing is, is unsafe. <coughs> Sorry. Um, recommendations to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. On SB 2819, as is, are there any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Okay, thanks. Next up is SB 2759. This prohibits the state from leasing any public lands or extending the lease of any public lands to any individual corporation or federal <clears throat> agency that is in arrears in the payment of certain monies to the state, not compliant with consent degrees or, or other uh, items. Uh, recommendation on 2759. Uh, we'll just go ahead and leave the date def uh, deferred, which is July 1, 2050, and pass it as, as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Recommendation SB 2759, pass as is. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, measure passes. Next, next up is SB 2753 declares, clarifies that no state or county building code shall prohibit the use of substitute refrigerant allowed by the Environmental Protection Agency if the applicable equipment is listed and installed in compliance with the latest safety standards. Recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing on Vice Chair. On SB 2753, as is, no votes or reservations? Hearing none, measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 2735 requires driver's license examination to test the applicant's knowledge of the danger that larger motor vehicles present to pedestrians. Requires offenders, offenders, offenders who are found to be excessively speeding or driving while intoxicated to retake and pass their driver's license examination for each offense. Um, We'd like to add to the proposed testing requirement about the dangers posed by large vehicles to pedestrians and, phrase, and bicyclists. And let's see, the other ones. Uh, and we'll also clarify that, it's, that it is a conviction instead of the ambiguous word violating under the habitually operating a vehicle or other, under the influence of an intoxicant statute that will trigger the requirement to retake the driver's license and exam. I'll add a savings clause, and there's some technical amendments as well. Questions, concerns? Seeing on Vice Chair. On SB 2735, with amendments, any no votes or reservations? No. No vote for Senator Owa. Measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 2721, clarifies that violation of Part 1 of Chapter 200 of HRS relating to ocean recreation and coastal areas or any rules adopted there under shall be subject to criminal penalties. Uh, we'd like to add a savings clause, and it has a bad date, and we'll leave that. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. SB 2721, with amendments. Are there any no votes or reservations? No. No vote for Senator Wa. Measure passes. Thank you. Next up is SB 2697, requires the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs to revoke the license of architects who have been or caused a government employee to be convicted of, criminal off of a criminal offense involving the acceptance of a bribe. Uh, the recommendation on 2697 is to uh, it has a bad defective data or effective data already so we'll just pass it as is questions or concerns if not vice chair on sb 2697 as is are there any no votes or reservations hearing none measure passes thank you next up is sb 2637 this required requires the third meeting of a board to deliberate and act on a matter investigated by a group of its members to be held at least six days after the second meeting. So this is a Sunshine Law bill. Um, the recommendation here is to put on a, a deferred effective date of April 14, 2112, and that's it. Questions or concerns? Seeing that, Vice Chair. On SB 2637, with amendments, are there any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. 
Thank you. Next up is SB 2631. Uh, this would prohibit commercial website operators from publishing website, websites and has like exemptions. Recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. SB 2631 as is. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. Okay, thank you. Next up is SB 2630. This authorizes pedestrians to act contrary to the statewide traffic code when a reasonably careful pedestrian would determine that there's no immediate danger of collision. Required that any person that drives a motor vehicle greater than the speed limit be fined out more than $100. Um, recommendation is to pass it as is, but uh, we'll put on the committee report that there's a possible title issue with the fines part of it. Um, may not be related to pedestrians, I'm not sure. Questions or concerns? Senator Alfonso. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'll be voting no on this, um, primarily seeing the testimony in previous committee from law enforcement and HDOT. And in previous session, I did vote no as it relates to this measure. Thank you. Understood. Other questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Okay, SB 2630, uh, as is, Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chairs, aye. Senator Alfonso, no. Senator Senator. Ben Senator Buen Buenaventura? Sorry. Aye. Right. And Senator Owa? No. No. Measure passes. All right. Coming to the last measure on this agenda, SB 2597 clarifies that the prohibition against board and commission holdover members from holding office beyond the end of the second regular legislative session following the expiration of the member's term of office takes precedence over any other conflicting statute. Recommendations to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. SB 2597, as is. Any no votes or reservations? Hearing none, the measure passes. All right, that concludes our 10 o'clock agenda, which leaves us uh, our 9.33 agenda, which as promised, I put to the end of calendar. Uh, this, this is SB 3196. This amends the prohibition on certain assault weapons to include assault rifles, assault shotguns, 50 caliber rifles, and assault weapon attachments. Uh, after some discussion with uh, Senator San Buenaventura, I've agreed to uh, recommend amendments. So the, the amendments would be, we'll insert a severability clause using language modeled after the sensitive places bill last year. And the penalty subsection on page 22 will specify that the men's raid to read who intentionally or knowingly violates. There's numerous technical amendments. And then we'll, then okay, then the, the the substantive part will remove assault rifles and assault shotguns from coverage, but will retain 50 caliber rifles, rifles and large magazines, but will define large magazines as anything over 20 rounds. I will also be sure that it doesn't affect the provisions already in statute that allow visitors to come and hunt in the islands, and will keep in language on grandfathering weapons already owned. Uh, oh yeah, okay, and we'll put a, a defective date on it. Um, April 14, 2112. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. On SB 3196, for the amendments, Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair votes no. Senator Elefante. Aye. Senator San Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Owa. No. The measure passes. Okay, thank you very much. That concludes our business for the day. Thanks for being here.